Hi everyone, Grant K here for the Flame Premium Learning Channel. This video will look at various workflows that allow you to seamlessly interchange your work between different core creative environments within the Flame products. The previous ideas covered story-centric and desktop-centric workflows. We either use batch or batch effects in the sequence to complete the work. However, there are no actual barriers preventing you from using the timeline, batch effects and batch all together in a single comprehensive workflow. Thinking about it differently, there is an underlying relationship between your datasets and the way you view them. So a clip is a timeline, which is a flow graph, which is a clip. One dataset in the pipeline, but represented in different views best suited for certain tasks. In fact, there is no official creative starting point in the application. And you have total freedom to move your datasets between various states when you feel it is required. The bottom line is that all workflows are dictated by the job and typically it's not a unidirectional workflow. So here are a few round-tripping scenarios. We'll start off in the sequence using our Timeline Effects tools, then progress into Batch Effects and then migrate the composite to the batch environment. The sequence is already loaded in the Sequences Reel within the Active Reels group. Please note that you do not always have to open a source clip as a sequence to work with it. You rarely open a source clip as a sequence to keep all editorial operations active. For all other desktop gestural operations, you can leave your clip as a source clip. Using either the Reels or Timeline view, I can navigate to the shot that I would like to work on. I'll swipe to the player and we can start working on the shot. Let's start off by changing the colour of this building. We'll do this by applying Timeline effects to the segment. With the segment selected, press Ctrl Tab and the Effects ribbon will appear just above the selection. There are many Timeline effects to choose from, but in this instance, I'll apply a colour warper to the segment. You have the mini toolbar for minor adjustments, but I'll go into the Advanced Editor and I will pull a selective on the brickwork. Let's just have a quick look at the matte view. The key is not perfect, so I'll tweak the black and white levels of the key. I'll also hold Shift Alt and proportionately blur the matte. Returning to the result view, I will make this obvious and push the brickwork to a unique shade of blue. Now I only want to affect the colour of the brickwork and not everything else around it. So exit the colour warper and press Ctrl Tab to call up the effects ribbon. If you have watched previous videos in the Flame Family Primer series, I mentioned that the underlying VFX pipeline is based on the main batch compositing engine. This allows us to access many of the same creative tools available without having to dig deep into a flow graph. It also allows for more flexibility to reorder the timeline effects which you will see in a moment. Click the GMOSC Tracer Timeline Effects to add it to the segment. We'll create a garbage mask to isolate the colour correction to the building. To move the workflow along, I'll jump into the Advanced Editor and load the mask of the building that I did earlier. Now I'll go back to the Timeline view. At this moment, the GMOS Tracer is being applied after the Colour Warper in the VFX pipeline. This means that the mask is not currently limiting the colour correction. So you can reorder the timeline effects. I'll pick up the GMOS Tracer and move it before the Colour Warper. In fact, you can reorder most timeline effects to change the effects processing within the VFX pipeline. Secondly, the GMOSC Tracer's default behaviour is to provide an alpha channel to the segment for compositing purposes. If you toggle the LED in the Comp tool, you can enable or disable the alpha. However, to redirect the mask for limiting colour correction instead of affecting the alpha, select the colour warper in the effects pipeline. To the right of the mini toolbar, enable Use Matte. The GMOSC Tracer will now be used by the Colour Warper and not for the Alpha Channel. So you can achieve these tasks without having to rely on a flow graph to do this type of work. Moving on, I would like to repair a lot of the grass in the foreground. 
To do this, I want to use the Paint node in BatchFX. So ensure the segment is still selected and press Control Tab to call up the Effects ribbon. I want to convert the Timeline effects into nodes, so enable Selection as a Flow Graph. Going into the Batch Effects, you can see the node pipeline that is created under the Timeline effects in the sequence. So you are always working with the same tools, but in different views. If you see the Comp node or a Back Clip, we are not using those, so just delete them. Next, I'll drag out a custom flow graph as I did in the previous videos and connect up the pipeline. Going into the Paint node, if I flick between the Front and Result view, you can see that I've repaired the grass covered areas. This was then recomped back onto the original shot with the color corrected building. Coming back to the schematic view, you can take the workflow even further. In this case, you can choose to move this flow graph out of the sequence into the main batch creative environment. Depending on the job, you might see it necessary to do this, but it is not mandatory in all circumstances. To move the flow graph with all the nodes, connections and media, you can use a BFX clip or an iteration. They both work just as efficiently. However, the BFX clip puts everything into a single clip, which gives a great gestural feel to the Flame product's design. To create a BFX clip, select the Comp node in the flow graph and call up the contextual menu. Close to the bottom of the list, choose Create BFX. All the nodes from this point and downstream will be contained in this newly created BFX clip. So you are essentially keeping everything together for this composite, as well as making it portable within the workspace. I'll just select this BFX clip and rename it to Work in Progress. Now there are a few extra benefits of using the BFX clips in your general workflow. The BFX clip is just another representation of your work. So you could use it to tidy your schematic as you work. You could also delete all the old nodes and just use the BFX clip. If you need to edit the nodes within the BFX clip, you can just call up its properties and explode it open. The other benefit is that you can render it. You can call up the contextual menu again and choose to render the selected BFX clip. Please note that rendering the BFX clip is not compulsory for any workflow but you can use the BFX clip as a caching tool in your batch flow graphs. By using intermediate renders in the flow graph as well as proxy mode will certainly speed up interactivity in very heavy composites. So to move this BFX clip, rendered or unrendered, you use the media panel to move it between the batch effects and the batch group and vice versa. If you don't see the media panel, hold control and swipe the screen to bring it up. Looking at the schematic reel of the batch effects, you will see that the BFX clip is also visible. When you select the BFX clip in the schematic, it will select it in the media panel, but not currently the other way around. So pick up the BFX clip and place it in a schematic reel within the batch group. If the batch group is collapsed, just hover the clip over the batch group until it expands and then you can drop the clip into a schematic reel. Please note that you cannot drag a clip into the batch group directly from the batch effect schematic. You always use the media panel. Now exit batch effects and bring up the reels on the desktop. So a copy of the BFX clip was placed in the batch group. Click the batch tab to switch to the batch area. Hold control and swipe away the media panel. What I found to be very important is that the duration of the BFX clip is the duration of the segment in the sequence. So hold T and click on the BFX clip to set the batch duration. As I mentioned before, you can call up this clip's properties and explode the BFX if you want. So there are the nodes with the footage and connections all intact. I'll drag out the last section for the composite in the custom node bin to speed up time once again. In the last nodes, I added some 3D text going round the statue. 
and I also added a vignette effect using a Matchbox shader node. Obviously, depending on what you're doing, your node trees can get pretty big, but I'm just showing you an applied workflow. Now at this point, you could use render nodes to render the results to the batch group, reels group or library. However, in all cases, this will only give you the final render and not all the components that make up the composite. So you can create an iteration or a BFX clip as well. I'll stick to what I did earlier. I'll select the Matchbox node and rename it as the finishing point in the composite. With the Matchbox node still selected, I'll call up the contextual menu. Once more, choose Create BFX. Please note that I'm not going to render it. You can do that whenever you want. Bring up the media panel again with CTRL swipe. Now the next step is not mandatory, but I find it helps me keep track of what I want to do with this BFX clip. Drag and drop the BFX clip from the batch group into a reel within the current reels group. As a quick reminder, you could also drop the BFX clips into the library if you wanted to save them there. You can also archive as well as wire the BFX clips. All the media, nodes and connections relevant to the composite will be kept inside the BFX clip wherever you put it. Now just to reduce the amount of information displayed in the media panel, you can collapse the batch group if you're not using it. Switching back to the timeline view, the BFX clip is visible in the reels and you can also see the sequence we are working with. If you don't see this, then ensure you toggle the eye icon next to the current reels group. At this point, you have a few choices how to use the BFX clip in the sequence. You could just drag it into the original BatchFX composite and work with it from there. However, if you like using the timeline to version your shot, you could work slightly differently. Drag the BFX clip onto the track above the original batch effects segment. Just use page up and page down to move the focus point between the versions. You can also select the BFX clip and open it in batch effects to carry on working with it. The main point is that you can keep moving back and forth between all core creative areas without limitation. As I've kept stressing through the Flame Family Primer, there is no right way or wrong way with how you can work. What is important is whether you work with Flame, Flare, Flame Assist or Flame Premium, you should not be constrained by any workflow. This is a major time saver for all jobs as well as giving you total creative flexibility. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Flame Premium Learning Channel for future videos.